Hey everybody, it's Travis Holzman with Food Forest Abundance, Minnesota. And I'm doing an update video for my indoor deep water culture bucket system. Tomatoes and peppers, I'm growing in these buckets. And if you've been following along, you'll be able to tell the growth of these tomato plants. And one is just about taller than I am. And I'm 6'1". So it goes to show you how big these and how big and fast these things can grow in uh, these bucket systems. That's absolutely crazy how big this thing, and it started a foot shorter than everything else. Now it's three feet taller than everything else. But uh, I'm just gonna flip you around and show you. And then uh, the pepper plants are getting huge also and there's flowers all over them. Um, my outdoor pepper plant that has been inside since the first frost is starting to get peppers all over it right now. So that's a good thing. And let's just flip you around so you can see the progress. All right, I'm gonna get down at ground level so you can actually see how tall these tomato plants are. Look at how tall it is. That's a, almost a foot and a half over the top of this trellis. And I think the trellis is five feet high. So, yeah, so we got there. And then uh, obviously I'm, I'm gonna raise the lights up one more time, uh, but it's not gonna do anything for these other tomatoes. I can just flip that light on right there because that's also a grow light up there. Um, but yeah, the yellow pear tomatoes, it's catching up. So it's probably in a, but another week, it's gonna be as tall as the other one. This middle one is the Roma tomatoes. That's getting there. I gotta do some more trellising with that. Give it some more stability. It's just starting to get big and stuff. And here we go, look at the pepper plants. And look at the size of that leaf right there. But these are the uh, poblanos. And you can see there's flowers everywhere all over it. So hopefully we can get some peppers coming in here uh, shortly. You should be able to see one of the first one or two. And then it's just going to be full of them. Uh, this one here, we have some buds on this one also. And then we got little buds on the uh, black Hungarians and starting to flower also. And so that's going great. We got the citronella with some new growth. It's starting to flower, but then it stopped. And we got the banana trees, little baby ones, and they're doing great. And this one's doing amazing. So green and getting so thick. I'm gonna thin this one out. I'm gonna take some of these pups out in the springtime. And we'll see what happens with that. Cause haven't had the best luck when I take the pups away. The mother always seems to die. So we'll have to try to do a better job next time. And then here we go with the peppers coming in. We got one here. We got another one over there. Another one right here. Uh, but yeah, it's just gonna start is going to be loaded with peppers here in another week or so and uh we'll see what happens with this one over here because they're all different uh you got anaheims and this one here is uh oh no uh cow wonders i think something like that and i can't remember what this one is either but they're they're healthy and i just put uh Last time I used nutrients, I added fish emulsion in the solution this time. So I switched it up from the worm castings and I used the, uh, the fish emulsion, which is just basically it's ground up fish shit or just fish parts. It, it basically smells like you just got done after a day of fishing and you just cleaned all your fish. It stinks pretty bad, but fish is great. 
This stuff is great for uh, these vegetable plants and fruit plants. So that's that. And I'm gonna just do a little, little bit here. We got some stuff that's flowering over here and looking really good. This one here, critical, is taking the longest to flower, but it's not gonna get much taller than this. It's gonna get a little wider, but I think this is gonna be the best one out of all of them. The other ones aren't, aren't doing too bad. You know, this one's really tall, but it's starting to flower pretty well. And then, uh, yeah, the, a couple of them are really tall and a couple of them are short. You know, everything does its own thing and is different but they are looking pretty good and I wanted to water them but I have no water in my townhouse at the moment because the uh, a woman in the townhome uh, in the other set of buildings or other set of townhomes her the water main broke near her place and flooded her basement uh, yesterday so they had to shut down everybody's water and so i have actually i had to order doordash a few gallons of water so i can water my plants um in here until my water's turned back on and the the deep water the bucket system still has about two gallons of water left in the bucket so we're good there and that circulates around and you don't lose a lot of water there until it's the it's the plants soaking up all that water because um, you have water that is fed through the bottom and that there's a bubbler in there kind of like a fish aquarium so that bubbles all the water and helps splash the roots from below and then you got the uh, drip tube that drips from the top so there's constant nutrients going through these and but they are definitely soaking up a lot of water because i mean look how tall they're growing and i can't wait for them to be just full of tomatoes here pretty soon and i like putting tomatoes on burgers and like the smaller ones like the yellow pears and the cherry tomatoes those are great on salads and uh yeah so that's that uh just as a quick video and i'm probably behind on posting uh for the past week but i'm gonna get those all up this afternoon uh so everybody can get caught up on where these are at uh but just remind everybody you see what's going on in the world today and how much prices are for all the food that we consume and then you look at how crappy the food is that we are consuming at the grocery stores and well the the way to make that better is to start growing your own food and if we all start doing our part just a little bit growing around our own food we can solve a lot of the world's biggest problems because uh, we can cut out the poison producers and big agriculture that is spraying poisons on our fruits and vegetables and they're also using genetically modified seeds which you know they're created for a certain type of pest and also to make a to give a, a larger yield in a faster amount of time but they're not telling us what is being passed on to you as a consumer when you consume when you eat those fruit or vegetables they aren't going to tell you because they don't have to because they own our government officials and a lobby to make sure they don't have to label anything or let you know that they're poisoning you. So anyway, 
if we all start growing our own food, you know, everybody in your, your little neighborhood or your family can grow 10 different types of fruits or vegetables and then your other neighbor can grow 10 different types of fruits and vegetables. And then all your abundance, all your extras, you can trade back and forth. And then everybody has fresh, nutritious food that is grown without poisons. It not only tastes better, it's much better for you. I mean, there's a big difference between a tomato you get off the a, uh, a naturally grown tomato plant versus the one in the stores. The ones in the stores don't even taste like tomatoes anymore. They're just, they taste like shit. And that goes with all the types of fruits and vegetables. There's no comparison when you eat fresh right off the plant, right in your own backyard or in your own basement. But that's what it's all about, my friends, is uh, taking responsibility for your future and becoming self-sufficient so you don't have to rely on those outside sources that are not there to benefit you in any way, shape, or form. And then you're going to pay a hell of a lot more for them. And then all that processed food is garbage and it's eating everybody's insides up, making everybody sick. And uh, that's what it's all about, people. So grow food.